and welcome back to Alex Goes Sailing. In this episode, you're going to see me build up this rudder uh, because previously the person before me actually cut this in half for some strange reason. There's no actual reason because the keels actually go lower than the actual rudder itself, even when it's its correct length. But they cut it in half, so I had to rebuild it, and now it's nice and strong. So I'll show you all of that when I'm building it. And uh, I'm also going to show you when I built that the companionway hatch, the sliding hatch, and also the doors that shut. And I'll show you a couple of other bits as well. Right, so all the fiberglass work that's going to be done on the hatches and uh, on the actual rudder itself uh, is going to be done with this stuff. Now I've got some uh, chop strand matting here. Um, really good stuff. Um, not so, as strong as like cloths and say, but it's cheap, easy to work with. Bends around all the corners nicely. So I like using that stuff. And I've also got some uh, very thin tissue paper kind of uh, glass. So that's good at filling over the, the chop strand and making it much easier to sand and fair to get a nice surface. Um, but I've also got the heel ply in a big roll. So you can see the big roll of that. Um, so you can get a nice surface with the, the combination of these two um, to which then sand and paint and do all that stuff. So that's really good and makes it quite easy to, to lay up some glass. So here you can see when I got the boat and the actual rudder is being cut in half to how I want it to be, as you saw in the first clip. So I'm going to have to modify and add a bit of marine ply to the bottom. I'm probably going to sandwich two pieces together and then fair it in, shape it, and then glass it all together. Now we've attached a piece of wood, we'll fair it in and fill in all the voids so we can start laying up glass. And we're going to lay up glass over the entire thing. So again, with the chop strand, we're going to lay it up on each side. So we're going to try and wrap around and overlap on the edges of the of the rudder itself so that the leading edge and the training edge are, has got like a double layup uh, where we've gone over it twice with the glass so I'll probably do three or four layers on each side maybe more maybe even five and then tissue and then we'll do some peel ply so we can avoid voids and then we'll go over and sand and fair till it's nice and smooth and then ready for paint again now doing all this fiberglass work um, I'm gonna be using some polyester resin um, used it on the entire boat so far and i really like this stuff you can see all the different curing times with uh, with the catalysts that i've got to add so normally i add about two percent uh, because it tends to be around like well, this time of year it's about 12 degrees normally maybe up to 15 so that would give me like maybe half an hour of working time maybe a little less uh, if i had, had more catalyst but uh, you get your catalyst with it, you add that, mix it up. I've got these um, mixing cups with uh, numbers on the side, which uh, gives me a nice gauge of how much resin I want to use for how much glass I'm using. Um, but it's quite easy to mix up some more. I've got some stir sticks because, well, just get loads of them, you'll need them. I've got these pets, um, which got milliliters on the side. So if, say, on the cup on the side, I get maybe 200 in there then I just uh, adjust, to allow my 2% for the catalyst, um, which is very easy to do. Um, I've also got my uh, rollers. Um, that one's missing the roller bit, obviously, but that's to get all of the bubbles out and uh, make sure I've got a nice solid layup, not too much of anything else. So yeah, that's my setup, perfect. And uh, this stuff's a Lodge register, so it's approved for marine use as well. So I ended up doing about three to four layers of the chop strand and then a bit of the tissue and then the peel ply. And uh, we used the roller to get all the air bubbles out in between and, and the actual layup was really good. No real voids anywhere. A little bit rough on some of the edges, but like, that's a given with how sharp they are. So a little bit of fairing and clean that up and then just seal up the fiberglass and then I could do the barrier coat and the anti -foul. Here we have the rudder that we've just fixed up. Um, I've already belted it up. So you can see we've got four stainless steel bolts in there, all nylock, so they're not going to come undone. Uh, we've done opposite side bolting, which is good. Um, and the plate, I don't know if you can see at the top there, a little bit sticking out there. Um, but this actually um, sticks out. Uh, probably plate comes down here. I'll show a picture of it now. Uh, probably comes down to there. So in respect to the actual rudder itself, it's probably covering up a third. Uh, of its surface area so we had to build this quite strong um, but we managed to match to the edge uh, around the 
the edges at the bottom. Uh, so that's pretty good and uh, hopefully it works on the water quite well. As you can see, it looks pretty even all the way through. Uh, a lot of fairing and sanding has gone into that and uh, the anti has worked really well. And uh, well, this thing's solid, like punch it, shake it around, it ain't going anywhere. So you can try and look at a bit of flex in it. I think it just moves the entire shaft itself. So that is one well-built rudder and uh, hopefully it won't break because uh, knowing my luck it will break but if not we do have the outboard on the back so we will be able to steer and then we will also have the plate and hopefully if it does break it'll just break in half again and be not as bad as uh well it'll be exactly the same as what the person before me did where they actually just cut this off for some weird reason although the keels actually stick out below this so they wouldn't really have a reason if they were grinding it out because the keels would stop the rudder before but anyway they decided to or maybe they actually crashed into something but now we have the full rudder back um, back to what its size it's meant to be based on other boats um, other vivacity boats so this should do me well um, I'll let you know how it goes on the water hopefully we can uh, go to wind a little bit and uh, not have too much helm in different ways now onto the companionway hatch I had to solve the problem that there wasn't any hatch and to do that I decided to make up a little plan. So the main issue I had was with getting the sliding hatch. You can do it like a raising hatch but that wouldn't make any sense on such a small boat. So I was going to go with a sliding design. So there are a few different ways you can do it. Some have like a raising hatch system, some have one that you actually have to remove or hinge up. Uh, but on this one I'm going to go with a sliding design as that's what most boats have and uh, it's quite easy to do if you figure it out correctly. So a few episodes back we did the deck paint and before I actually painted the deck I fitted the lift off hinges and mounted the doors for a test fit as I knew I was going to do the sliding hatch. Now that I had the doors fitted I could actually work out the interface between the hatch and I could make it out of marine plywood and I just uh, screwed some bits together and made it fit over the edge because it's two different level changes for the hatch that was quite easy to do. I could then go on to test it. Now the way this system works is with four Barton tracks, I think they're 25mm, they're bolted onto the deck and along the top of the companionway area, so two at the front, two at the back, and then four little mounts which I bought, like little pulley block things that actually clip onto the tracks and just took those off and bolted them straight onto the hatch so it's one in each corner and they just fit right on and then you've got little end stops so you have to slide the hatch on and then put the end stops on when you want to install the hatch but I mean it slides really well. Now that the hatch was finished and shaped properly I could then fair and fit all the imperfections and all the screw holes and I could get on with the fiberglassing. Now on the hatch I'm going to be doing um, probably four or five layers of this stuff maybe a little less um, because we're going to do it with plywood so that's going to be most of the strength and then skinning on both sides with this so I'll probably do three on each side um, with a layer of tissue and then a, a cover with the, um, the peel ply uh, and then we can fair it and sand it to a heart's content and then get a bit of paint on there right what I have here is a fairing compound a polyfair as you can see which means it's polyester which means it will work chemically with our resin that we're using down here polyester resin and uh, what well, the entire boat's made out of it, so it's perfect. And you can see they leave their stats on it. So gel time's about 10 minutes. Um, and the catalyst levels are slightly different to down here. So I did about three layups of the chop strand on the bottom and top, with a bit of overlap here and there. And then also I did a bit of fairing with the fairing compound that I mentioned. And uh, that made it really smooth and made it perfect for paint. And we use the same two-part paint that we've used on the rest of the boat. And we've got a really good finish on this, actually, because I spent a little bit too much time fairing it and sanding. But, I mean, it's well worth it. And then I could actually fit it up to the boat and see what the final outcome was. Now, I've bolted up this uh, track here, T-Track. I think it's 25mm Barton track, so that's good. And you can see the reveal we got on the actual hatch. Uh, which is pretty flush there's a little bit of scraping just underneath where you can see the little mast there's a tiny bit of scraping so i might take it off and do a little bit more sanding but that slides perfect and it locks out 
So that's ideal. Water, nice and watertight too, as you can tell. We've had loads of rain recently. So this is ideal. I really like how this came out and I can actually jump on top of that hatch as much as I like and it doesn't even flex or like move. So pretty confident that it's solid if I wanted to stand on it and she would on the deck. Now I'm going to quickly show you the companionway step that I actually fitted some gas struts to to actually lift up and close down and that's where the toilet and all the electrical stuff is going to be kept, bilge pumps and things like that. I also made the anchor locker hatch which was just an aluminium check plate that was bent correctly so I thought I'd just whack the hinges back on and drill a hole and get this little fitting for the chain pipe uh, so I could run down nicely into the anchor locker. Now if you haven't seen last week's episode go check that out as I actually build the launch trailer for Merakai and uh, get her moved for the first time which was quite interesting and uh, actually worked quite well and I actually installed a massive winch on the back of the trailer to get her on board. But yeah, lots of good things to come on this uh, channel. So subscribe and like and uh, leave a comment down below because I do get back to you. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.